I have a fear of elevators. So I'm worried, very worried to be doing this. I've never heard of someone this fat not liking elevators. I love the damn things. You can't walk in without the tank. What's up guys, Sean back, more of my 600 pound life, and Crystal Rollins. Which is kind of funny because this is actually the third Crystal. Like at this point, I'm pretty sure if your name's Crystal, you're like condemned to be 600 pounds. Like there's just no way getting around the chubby curse with that name, apparently. But 39 years old, weight unknown. So uh, let's get right into Crystal and see what she's talking about today. This poor dog needs groomed so bad. Oh, and California girls don't know how to clean, apparently. Hey, Darth Dorito. Life at my size has become a never-ending struggle. Just even breathing is a struggle. And I have to have oxygen on all the time. He said it was going to be easy. At this point, we've ate ourselves into the point where it's our own damn fault, though. But oxygen, that probably is rough to deal with. Because my weight has put so much pressure on my lungs. My lungs just can't handle my body anymore. So when I go to sleep at night, sometimes I can lay on my side. But most of the time, I just kind of sit up and sleep slanted. How's this lady doing a split while she's getting choked out by the chub? rear naked choke from your double chins like it'd be like that sometimes though because if i lay back the pressure from my weight will suffocate me but it's not just my lungs at this point it just feels like my whole body is falling apart i mean look at me i sleep with a cpap machine i have high blood pressure i have congestive heart failure my leg there we go it wouldn't be my 600 pound life if we didn't get to like see this lady's muffler first thing in the morning but that's the angles they love to deal with well sometimes they leak water it's hard to get out of bed sometimes some days i just want to just stay there and not move but i still got to get up i got two kids to raise oh no i hate the ones with kids because if she doesn't actually try it's going to make me a whole different level of angry just because there's kids involved and like you feel bad when you see the kids suffering and looking at their parents kind of fall apart. No, no. Yo, can you come help me, please? Ivriana is 14 and Tatiana, who is only 12. 14, 12, but if, okay, I was a fat kid, okay? So I can think this. If my parents named me Ivory, I know I'm never not getting called Dumbo at school, okay? And that's not a mean thing. I'm just saying, think about things before you name your kids them. But it is a unique name. They need me. So I got to make myself get up and start the day. But some days are worse days than others. And so sometimes my daughter, Ivriana, has to help me get up. She, of course, is my firstborn. Yes, she snapped off the towel rack, too. Man, we've seen that a couple times here recently, but my fat ass did it, too. She's sweet and kind, and she's very helpful. She helps out with everything. But even with my daughter's help, I can't stand for more than a minute without starting to break into a sweat. My knees start to shake. My legs hurt. I can't walk more than, like, 20 feet, maybe. Joke's on you. I could get five minutes. I am the Olympian of 600 pounders. Also, that's a lot of Cheeto dust on that shirt. So I can't wait too long to sit down because my legs will start to give out really soon. And all I really want to do is eat. That's all I wanted to do since I got up. My girls help prepare our breakfast. Normally pancakes with bacon and eggs. And breakfast of champions. Everybody knows, like, 
bacon at the butt crack of dawn is the perfect thing. I rely on Ivriana and Tatiana to do most of the cooking for me. But I always at least try to do that with them because I love being around food and cooking with my girls is something special to me. Even though I know food is what caused me to be like this. So we are keeping brownie mix on deck next to the stove. She had a thing of margarine sitting there, so she's not even just using regular butter. And somebody said it's my superpower to identify blurred out foods. I was just so fat, I can do it. Like, even when I was a little kid, I could look through the grocery bag and see what the hell the food was. I eat all day long because I'm always hungry and I always want to eat. And people don't understand. They think, oh, well, if you just stop eating, you'll lose weight. Or you did that to yourself. It's like, yeah, I did do it to myself. I, I know. Essentially, that's kind of how it works. That's why we want our stomachs cut out. We stop eating, we lose weight. So it, it really is kind of that simple sometimes. People just want to fight it. I did. Nobody put a gun to my head to make me eat. I ate the food, I gained the weight. Yes, it's my fault. But that doesn't mean I chose this. It's an addiction, it's a disease. People don't understand the struggle of it. There's struggles involved, but, uh, yeah, I didn't have a browning to my head for brownies either, but at the same time, like, you've got kids, I feel like you should have got this on lock a long time ago. I didn't have that, I just had me screwing up me. And I can't even take care of myself. I have my two daughters, my mother, and my younger brother, who live nearby to help take care of me. Who would want to live like this? It sucks. Since I don't work, I spend 97% um, of my time at home, and so every day I become more miserable. I don't even think 3% of that is spent outside of the house, unless she sits on the porch or something. But I'm just saying, the sun burns. We're voluptuous vampires at this point. So food is my only escape. It's my only joy, and outside of my daughters, it's the only reason why I get up. It makes me happy. And it makes me forget about what doesn't make me happy. That has got to be at least two boxes of pancake mix. That's a lot of damn pancake mix. Are you almost done making the pancake mix now? Is it supposed to be soft or is it supposed to be like dough? Really? That's what she said. And cooking, even when I'm tired. And having a meal is the only activity I can do with my daughters. So food also means time with them. But I do feel guilty about what I eat and what it does to my family. I know they don't judge me. My children and my family understand the full on struggle. Even your family is going to somewhat judge you, but we've let ourselves get to a point where I actually think that like judgment oftentimes will help people change a little bit. You shouldn't judge people, but sometimes it'll work in a positive way. My kids live it with me every day. But they shouldn't be having to do any of this. And I feel bad about that because this isn't the life that I wanted for my girls. I should be able to do more for them than what I am able to do. And I feel bad about that. But then when I think about it and get depressed about that, it makes me want to go eat. To oh my God, we have to add the whipped cream. All right, well, this lady's uh, doing whipped cream whippets first thing in the morning, apparently. Forget about it. And it feels like it's been this way for most of my life. Because eating is the only thing that makes any of the bad feelings that I have go away. Did she just draw a dick on that pancake? Or am I just, my head's probably just in the gutter. And I learned that at a very young age. Times were always tough for my family. My mom was a single mother. She was 21 when she had me. So she and I lived with my grandma and my great grandma. It was the four of us all in one house. And my mom and my grandma worked to provide for us. I didn't get to see my mom a lot because she was working graveyard shifts at a donut store. And she's. Oh no. Krispy Kreme Karen strikes again. That was. Because she's going to bring home leftover donuts. I think we can blame the donut store. I'll blame whoever the hell I can. Donuts. I would blame the hell out of donuts. I slept most of the day because of that. So I was always craving her attention. I was around five or six then, and my mom would make it a point to eat with me whenever she could. So that became our thing, eating together. 
I mean, my mom's stay at home mom at this point, so she was always there. But what was I doing at five or six? Probably getting in trouble for stripping the Barbies naked because the little neighbor girl snitched on me. Whether I already ate or not, I would still want whatever she was eating because I wanted to eat with my mom, you know? So that's when I started putting on weight. And by the time I was seven, I was 80 pounds. And eventually, as I got a little older, food got more important to me because of stuff that happened to me. Oh no, this is going to go really bad, isn't it? Is 70 pounds or 80 pounds at seven like normal? Because I don't know. I, I was probably around there, somewhere around there. When I was eight, my mom started dating someone. And a year later, when I was nine years old, my mom got married and we moved to another house with my stepdad and his kids. And it was just a big adjustment for us. But something worse came right after that because... I was by a family member. No. Oh, man. I can't speak my mind freely about those kinds of people on YouTube because the one time I did, I got in trouble for bullying. But I, let's just leave it at I hate them. And the horror of being my was more than what I could deal with. And so that was one of the hardest times in my life. And through it, I just ate constantly. Whatever I could get and however much I could get. I ate it nonstop. And so that's when my weight took a big leap. And by the time I was 12, I got to about 200 pounds. Yeah, where was I? Like 220 at that point? But uh, her gaining a lot of weight makes a lot more sense. Me, not so much. I just liked how food tasted. Being able to escape by eating was the only option I had to deal with it. Because I told my mom and I told my grandma, but nobody else knew. And I felt like my mom made me hide it. So Hold the phone. Your mom didn't protect you? She was, what, nine years old? A teacher grabbed my arm too hard when I was nine and left her fingernail prints in my arm. My mom went there and ripped into that lady so bad, I had to change classes. And you know what that taught me? I'm untouchable. Nobody can mess with me, baby. But after that, <laughs> I didn't feel safe in my own home. Because I didn't think anything would be done to stop it. I felt so betrayed by my mom and it was somebody in that situation. So when I was 13, I moved in with my grandmother. My only comfort through it all was eating to forget the pain I was in. How crazy is it? You grow up in a single parent home, right? And then that happens to you and the parent you depend on is everything to you. You're just happy to be around. Ships you off to your grip. Man, I couldn't think any lower of her mother right now if I tried. So after that, my weight just ballooned up. And by the time I started high school, when I was 14, I was around 300 pounds. The and whole thing screwed up my life a lot because I didn't look at guys the same. And as I got into high school, that became more of an issue because when it came to guys, I didn't have any real boyfriends because guys only wanted me for one thing. Okay, so no strong male figure in her life, which, you know, sing some single moms do a really good job. But I'm just saying, she didn't have the guy there to show her how she should have been treated. That kind of stuff just eats me up when I think about it because she didn't have probably any self-esteem because she's overweight. And then she probably just let people use her because she thought, well, hey, I'm needed, which is sad. And I got used a lot for sex. And food had become my best friend at that point. So all through high school, I just ate. I never stopped or slowed down. So hey, me too. by the time I graduated, I was close to around 420. Yep. Somewhere around there, I don't know. Scale only went up to 350 and ignorance is bliss. I don't know what exactly I was, but it sounds about right. After high school, I got a job at a pizza place. I was still... Could we stop working with food? We're already fat. Imagine if I worked at a fast food restaurant. Sean would have been 800. You guys, see you tomorrow. I'll roll in at some point. Living with my grandmother, but I wanted to save up to be on my own. While I was working there, I started dating one of my co-workers, and I got into a decently long-term relationship with him. And eventually, he convinced me to move away with him for a while, and lived with him for a few years. And during that time, I was still getting bigger. Okay, so 
guys used her her whole high school like career, right? Gets a job at a pizza place, meets uh, Peter Piper of the Pied Pizzas, and then she moves away with him. But, I mean, her mom already abandoned her anyway. She just had her grandma, right? But after we were together for a while, my boyfriend started drinking, and then he started to get violent when he drank. So one day, he beat the living tar out of me. And oh I didn't just God. take it. The police were called. He was arrested. But stupid me. I was like, oh, no charges. I love him. Good for you for calling him. But I don't know. Because once it already gets to that point, just typically from what I've seen, it doesn't really like de-escalate. If he'll take it that far, he'll take it further. So uh, scum of the earth. Guys like that, scum of the earth. You know, brought him back home. I had him arrested like three or four times. It went on for a long time. He even went to violence classes. And we stayed together until I was about 21. And during that time, all I had to go to was food. If you're a guy and you need a class to tell you not to put your hands on women, like, I, I feel bad for you because you are an absolute loser. Loser. So I gained some and got to around 480 when I was 21. I was packing on the pounds because food was getting me through it all. But when I broke up with him, I was 23 and over 500 pounds at that point. But I was still independent and I could take care of myself. So I went back home to California. I would love to know what kind of stuff they were fighting over though. I'd like to hear that guy's side, even though I think he's a scummy dude, but I, I don't know, I, just something tells me if they were fighting over the grocery bill or something, it's kind of on brand for being overweight, but it's still not okay. I got my own place, and for about a year or so, I just looked after myself. When I was 25, I met the girls' dad, and we got together and had my kids. I met him at my friend's house, and we started dating. And then all right, so in comes new guy, gives her the Dippin' Dots DNA, and then uh, we have a kid on the way. Mazel tov. And I moved in with him. Unlike my other relationship, things were good in the beginning, but he turned out to be more than my previous boyfriends. But things were fine up until I had my first daughter. I had her within a year of us getting together, and that's when he started to get more aggressive with me. Is she ever just going to find a decent guy? Because it seems like just worse after worse after worse. She just has the worst luck on earth. But he didn't start to get physical with me until after we had our second daughter, Tatiana, when I was 27. He'd hit harder and harder each time. And then he'd beat me for longer. And then one day, he was literally beating me to death. And thankfully, he was able to get the front door open. And my daughter ran out the front door. God, this is just terrible. Nothing about her childhood into early adult years sounds any what, like, I don't know. I, I can't even think of the word for it. So any, there's no positive in it. It's just all negative, negative, like terrible things were happening to this woman. And she was screaming, no, daddy, no. That was enough to distract him and I was able to get away. And I got my girls and ran. As I threw both of my girls in the car and I got in, I remember I had like a quarter of a tank of gas in the car, no money, and I just hopped in the car and drove up to my brother and my mom's house, and we ended up going to the police, and charges were pressed. He only went to jail for a few weeks. That's it? Did your brother do anything about it? Because uh, I don't think I would uh, allow my sister to show up black and blue and not want to go do something to do. But we did manage. I get a restraining order for like five years. The last time my daughter saw their father, it was like almost two years ago, but he still calls them every once in a while and talks to them. But he's not Come really back. there for them in any way that counts. No child support, nothing like that. And I wouldn't be okay with him being part of their lives more than he is now, so I'm fine with that. But I was 29 when that happened, and I stayed with my mom and with my brother for a little bit until I get a place of my own. Okay, so her mom comes back in the picture after this terrible experience with another guy. So, n no guy has done right by her at all, ever, it seems like. They helped me a lot, and I feel like that time also helped me mend some of the relationship with my mom because 
I appreciated the help she and my brother gave me. But since then, I stopped dating. I chose not to get into relationships. I didn't want to bring men around my two girls. I didn't want that drama. I can't do that anymore. Is that like, okay, if that's what she actually did, that's cool. I just thought she probably just got to a weight where she just fixed, like, fixated on her and maybe taking care of her daughters. And the uh, dating just kind of slipped, went out the window. But yeah, I mean, all the negative. I could see that. For a while, I was raising them on my own. And my focus was just on them. I was working whatever jobs I could to provide for us. But I was still also overeating. And then a few years ago, it got to where I couldn't get around. I started to struggle taking care of myself. And now I can't work. And my mom and my brother, and sometimes one of my uncles, have to help take care of me with my daughters. And now you've got overweight daughters who are watching you on the steady decline in a house that is dirty with roaches. And I doubt you're making them go to school or do anything like that because, uh... You just don't strike me as somebody who's pushing good mothering skills if you're not willing to work on yourself to save your kids or be there for your kids. Because I'm not able to anymore. And I feel ashamed of that, especially when it comes to my daughters. I still try to do what I can to be a mom to them, but I'm very limited. How did you burn vegetables? Is the water gone in the vegetables? Yes. I had a friend that was that bad at cooking once. He called me, I burned the boiled eggs. How the hell did you burn boiled eggs? Yeah, the water's gone. Duh. Harry, get the lid off of there. Thank you. And move the, pot sugar. Off of the, move the pot off of the burner. Thank you. I can only do stuff with them that I could do sitting down. So the both of them have to take on a lot around the house that they shouldn't have to have on them at their age. I realize. Yeah, I mean, chores for kids, that stuff's pretty normal, but they essentially are the parents at this point. And this lady just kind of, what the hell? Did she steal one of those things from Home Depot? She's got a little roll around thing? And she's got a bag of snacks tied on the back. Holy hell, lady. Uh, does a lot of the cleaning. You know, she picks up around the house, sweeps the floors, keeps the living room up as much as she can. And I know it's hard for her to do all that on top of her schoolwork. Takes the trash down to the dumpsters. And she does her own laundry and cleans her own room. And both of them have to do the grocery shopping. So they have to do a lot more than most kids. Okay, you put a preteen and a teenager in charge of picking out all the food. What the hell do you think they're going to pick? Obviously, all the, like, brownies, sweets, all that stuff. You're going to get a ham, I guess, and a bunch of mac and cheese, though. And what I wish is I could just let them be kids. I need more macaroni and cheese. Oh. <laughs> and not have all the responsibility on them like that at their ages. But that's not possible. As long as I'm at this size and keep eating like I do. You're sitting here, I want to lose weight for my kids with four cans of soda, or three, I guess, while you're doing the, what, macaroni macarena over here? You're eating so damn much of this. But I can't quit it. Well, I'm probably going to have to have more than that. I'm going to have to have more than that on there. I guess because the only thing I know that can help me when it gets bad is food. And it it just makes me mad to see her sitting there like, hey, mama wants the meats. Give her the ham. Give me the ham, baby. Makes me forget the pain and everything that comes with it. But at the same time, I know that food has taken my life to where I'm 39 and I'm so big that I never leave my house. There's so many roaches crawling around the walls in the background. It's gross that the kids are being raised in this environment and her at that because all that machinery, breathing stuff, because they're breathing in, what, like roach poop all the time. This is my world. It's in here. And everything out there is passing me by. Because I'm trapped in here. I can barely take five steps without risking my body collapsing under its own weight. So I just sit and eat most of the day. That's my life, and I'm missing out on my girls growing up.
it's crazy to think that we're like, yes, we can't walk, so we're just going to eat. Because why the hell not? We're already this big. There's no point. But that's kind of where it gets. That's the mentality that you need to break. You need to work on that. So it makes me the saddest. Where I feel like I'm nothing but a burden to my own children. And even though they'll never say it out loud to me, I know that both my daughters feel every bit as trapped inside this box as I do. Because of what food is for me because of how I need it and what it gives me. But I know I did this to myself. It's good to at least hear her say that, but a traumatic past, yes, I understand that led to the eating and all the trouble that's there. But once the kids were involved and stuff like that, you'd think you'd want to be there long-term for them. Like maybe you're just now figuring this out, but they're already 14 and 12, essentially like over half of their child life you've kind of lost because of your weight and i need to change because of how bad it's getting my body is starting to break down more than i've ever felt it so i know it's getting to a bad place for me and that there's a good chance that i'm not going to be able to go on like this for too long so i know i need help to change because i'm afraid that if i don't make the changes that my children They'll give up on me, and my biggest fear is dying. Duh. That's all of us. But your kids, they might be perfectly normal despite what they've been through. But at this point, I think just the trauma, their childhood, all this trouble is going to cause a, like some kind of adult. They, they're going to need help in their adulthood, in my opinion. Just because of watching you like this is probably tearing them up inside. I'm afraid my kids will have to go on without me. I'm afraid of what it's gonna do to them if they find me dead one morning. But I know all that's gonna happen if I don't change. So I'm ready to get help to do that. And I know- You know what the crazy thing is, is they would be able to function better than her. If like she passed, they would still probably be able to function if uh they pass she wouldn't because they are taking care of her with these dry ass brownies too if you make box brownies always cook them like three minutes less than the box says because they dry out so bad i have to before it's too late because if i don't change now i'm gonna lose my life so i'm ready to take a chance and do whatever it takes for someone to intervene and help me stop from killing myself before it's too late and all my greatest fears come true. I want to get this going. I want to get loaded up. I want to get on the road. Hey, Josh, what do you want to start doing? Uh, let's go ahead and start bringing the boxes out. OK, just try and get as much done as you can while I take the tubs out and put them in the trailer first. OK, sounds good. My brother's going to go with me to Houston. Wow, this guy is pretty, I mean, pretty short, but the, the daughters are already kind of towering over him. They should have had this stuff done before he got there, though. So I'm extremely thankful for him and all he always does for me because I know without his willingness to do this with me, I wouldn't be able to. This is a sacrifice for my girls, too. They're having to leave all their friends and their life here to do this with me. I don't take that for granted at all. Did you find Ben, Josh? Yeah, he's coming to help now. Okay. Another way your daughters kind of get slighted by your selfishness and wanting to eat more food, which is pretty sad to see. My Uncle Ben is going to come with us, too, and just help us until we get moved into our new place. That trunk is very heavy, Ben. There we go. We got ZZ Top without the hair showing up to the party. Let's go, baby. I wish I had more time, but I don't. Because I called Dr. Now a couple of weeks ago and I got the earliest possible date for an appointment. And it's five days from now. And I don't want to waste time, so we're just going to have to go. Wow, Dr. Now put a rush order on her chub, huh? I've been trying to get everything in place to make this move, but this is a big leap of faith for me and my whole family. Oh, you got that? Yep because none of us know how this is gonna go. I could get there and Dr. Now tells me he can't help me. So. By 
teacher telling that man can help anyone along with that like treasure chest you're bringing full of snacks. Oh, doing this is scary. It's fine. Just keep walking. But I know it's something that has to be done if I want to have a chance at a life because I just can't keep going like this. I haven't seen that many damn tissues on the ground since I was helping my dad do this side job he was doing and I had to move this guy's bed and then I was like trying to pick up the tissues. He started screaming, no! I was like 10, man. I didn't know what the hell those tissues were for. Is that in the trailer or what? Yeah. But we haven't finished packing up everything. And I'm starting to feel really stressed about our timeline because if we fall too far behind, this can be bad. You got it? Mm-hmm. I feel like we're getting close to being done and to where we can get on the road, but it's just a lot to get ready for it. Why are you walking fast? Because it's heavy and you guys are carrying the roaches to wherever you're going to, so that's gonna suck for whoever lives near you. Because I want to get done. <sighs> I know. I am not gonna be able to make this trip multiple times. It has to be a one-way trip for me. Hopefully, I can at least do it once and make it there. Oh, the roaches are running so much more. But yes, when we get to a certain point, we're too large to do layovers, buddy. We're one-way trippers. <sighs> I should have brought a vacuum and <sighs> this whole situation and a is match. taking too long. I wanted to be gone already, and we're not. I mean, you knew, like, this was going on. Yes, but I also had a whole different plan of action than... You can shove your point of action, lady. You, you know you just sat there and ate and then expected him to come do all this. This. Yeah, but well, I mean, it is what it is, so... The time schedule now is completely thrown. It's like, what, already two? I need a break. You guys knew about the and you're making me work ten times harder, so... We basically did all the work. You could have had the cleaned up before we started moving. Also, my man shows up, what is this, a turtleneck in California? If I was him, I'd probably be a little pissed off, too, though. They could have done, been done this stuff. Okay, we get it, Josh. If you didn't live the way you did, we wouldn't have the problems we have. We literally wouldn't have these problems if they just would act right and live right but they don't Ooh, baby more roach shots here here we go uh we're playing a blood a bug's life for uh bariatric patients they choose to be dirty oh i can't stand that i can't stand that i've tried to be as patient as possible and i'm just like i i never knew it was this this bad i never knew You've been there for dinner, buddy. You knew how damn bad it was. Don't play like uncle didn't know what was going on, kids. You knew what was up. I'm just blown away. I think we're all getting nervous about the whole trip. Seeing our empty place is making it sink in that we're doing this. And my brother's had to rearrange his whole life to get ready for this too. Moving halfway across the country just to try to get help for me. God, you ripped up the damn floorboards. Look at that. That place is trash. No security deposit for you. Hopefully I can hold out to get a good ways there because we're already behind. This lady's flying V, just mighty ducks, the morbid mighty ducks, the whole way down the uh, sidewalk here. That's crazy. Imagine if you're walking the other way and you just kind of get swept up into that canal. Flexible though. People are staring. I, f I want to flip them Come off. On, Do it. Can I flip them off? No. No. I 100% would say go for it, sweetie. But I'm just a uh, bad influence. Don't listen. To me. I don't know. I'm already exhausted just from this. But hopefully it'll get a little easier from here once we get on the road. What about you thinks the journey from 600 pounds to a livable weight is going to get easier the closer you get to like the chubby castle okay we're good to go goodbye little house 
only thing I want to do before we go is stop by is and he... say goodbye to my oh. mom. Because I don't know when I'm going to get to see her next. This trip to Houston could be for a year or longer. I'm not going to lie. If I was her, I would hold a whole hell of a lot of resentment towards my mom for how she treated me as a kid when she just kind of shipped me off. And my mom won't be able to travel to see me for a while. And I won't be able to make this trip back for even longer. You know, me and my mom have had our issues, but she's still a big part of my life. And it's going to be hard for that part of me to be so far away. Tell mom to hop on in. This is the one-way obesity train to doctor now, and she's pretty damn close herself. So I just want to be able to see her and hug her before we go. Back. But I don't want to cry, so I'm not going to. Hello, mother. Hello, daughter. We're here to say goodbye. So you're off and running to Texas now? Um, uh, yeah. We just came to say bye. OK. Um. But what do you think you're gonna get there? See you next time, Mom. Uh, thanks for coming out just to say bye. But I feel like I would have just done this over FaceTime and dipped out. But I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she just needs some closure with her mom or something. She's not gonna see her for a while. Probably next week. Oh. Okay, we're being sarcastic. Okay. No, I'm being technically speaking, probably next week, Monday, is next yeah. week. So technically speaking. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Mom, so... I better let you get going. Yeah, let us get going, and we will call you, and... Okay. Cool. All right, I love you. Give me huggies. Mm -mm. I don't think I saw her take, like, a real legit shower or get clean, so she's got to smell like a brothel's bathroom right now. Uh, you need to come give your grandmother loves, and, uh... Yeah, please. <laughs> Bye, baby. You, here, Josh, I can take my thing. You gotta go get the other stuff out of the car. Doesn't this other door open? This lady is going to avoid walking at all costs. And she just found out she's on the third floor, so she's a little pissed off about that. Let's start another door. Of course not. <laughs> no. Of course not. The room wasn't supposed to be on the third floor. I don't do third floors. Yeah. We like to keep our feet firmly planted, but uh, Weight, weight Watchers wobble, but they don't fall down. So she'll get up there eventually. I can't at my size, and if I try, it could end very badly. With me either hurt, stuck, or even both. This is when I wish the producers were a little more of a jerk and they started playing like I believe I could fly in the background or something. I have a fear of elevators, so I'm worried, very worried, to be doing this. I've never heard of someone this fat not liking elevators. I love the damn things. You can't walk in without the tank. Look out below. We almost did the tubby timber the whole way down that shaft. That would have sucked. Nope. 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 I'm not riding the elevator. I, I'll sleep on a bed. Please put me downstairs. Please put me downstairs. I need something. Hold on, hold on. How the hell did she do that? 
she man managed to like rip her finger open somehow. Isn't the weight limit on those things 800? So this might be like my 800 pound like. How did that happen? The elevator dropped down when I stepped in it. I can't do the elevator. It's not happening. Josh, is there? For the sake of making it to Dr. Now's office tomorrow. Oh God, I think I might need to go to the hospital. I try. Oh my God, for that little cut, like remind me to stay the hell away from elevators. I'm going to share with you, or I, I never almost made anybody go down like downhill that fast. But yeah, no, that little cut, no shot. My dad like was working on a dump truck probably when i was those girls age and the like the gate came down landed on his pinky he walked up to the door with his pinky hanging off and then he told my mom hey i need some duct tape she's like no shot you're going to the hospital with that little cut she doesn't need it i to force myself through the door i think i might need to go to the hospital i think i might have just as i stepped in the elevator it dropped down and my hand got caught in the metal part and it broke my skin i don't think it's broken but it's swollen and it hurts so much of the rest of my body hurts right now. I don't know which pain to focus on. How about we focus on just getting to doctor now at this point? You almost made the elevator pop, lock, and drop it for a diabetic. So let's get the hell up in the room and let's just get to Houston. I can, I can bend it so it's not broken, but I'm so sorry. No, don't be sorry. It's mm -hmm. okay. Josh is looking at your room right now. Hey, baby. I can't believe that just happened to me. Stupid finger. Stupid elevator almost killed me. That'd be a hell of a way to go. That's a good lawsuit. The kids would have been set up for life with that one. Uh, we're going to try to find something bigger, better tomorrow, I think. Hopefully, we can get into our apartment in a couple days. This lady is just a bunch of negative energy. Everything she's complaining about, everything. Just get in the room, get in the damn bed, lady. Tripped in the parking lot. And the elevator almost killed me. If we're gonna be fair here though, you, you almost hurt the elevator too. Go over here and get the other leg up so we can get this flying V in the bed, man. Also, she's got hostess, zebra cakes, and moon pies tattooed on her arm. I imagine that's her frat. Do you need anything, Mom? Uh, a place Doctor to now. sleep. Uh, uh, I still gotta get the other half of my body up here. This is what we're gonna have to do. I have to put the wheelchair over here. I'm gonna have to use the wheelchair to step up onto the bed. Ooh, we're playing tubby Tetris. All right, you could just tuck and roll. You'll get up there eventually. Somebody give her a good old shoulder check right in the thigh. She'll get right up there. Like a stepping stool? Are you okay? No, I'm not. Okay. We're gonna help you get on the bed, Crystal. I understand she's had a bit of a traumatic day, 
But uh, we're going to need Morbid Messy to put a little kick in this thing, right? If she kicks that leg up, I'm confident she can get it up. Although, I used to pull on, like, my pants leg and pull my leg up when I thought I couldn't pick it up. It's kind of funny. Hell no, hell. Me and Ivory are going to have to push your leg up and over. You're going to have She's to pick like, up me? your leg and get it up there. You ready? I <laughs> think you can get this stuff. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh this is crazy. We don't want to get too far in that position. We might end up with another kid somehow. This whole experience with this trip has been miserable. It started out fine for the first few hours, and then it just got worse and worse from there. Okay, thank you, Josh, for all your help. At least she finally said thank you, but I'm going to need you to bring a little bit of positivity to this party. Because your kids are just watching you, like, sit here and be like, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. They're scared. They're in a place they don't know, and their mother's complaining about everything. You're going to have to at least put on, like, a strong face. So I'm just glad it's over now, and I just want to get some sleep. See you kids in the morning. So I can be ready for my appointment with Dr. Now. But I think I'm around 600. Maybe even a little under, because I've been trying to cut back, getting ready to come out here. Everyone knows 600 pound people guesstimate at first, and we round down. If you look at my driver's license, even when I was 605, that sucker said 520. Ms. Rollins? shouldn't be elevator crash fat man i've rode the elevator a lot of times okay and she's only got six pounds on me but uh you no know, we we can't destroy elevators it takes more weight than that but uh, today i'm i weighed in at 263 if any of you are curious so that means i've lost 342 pounds at this point wow that's a little higher than i thought basically the range that i was thinking so I'm happy about that, but I'm still a little nervous about meeting Dr. Now. Well, you better be, because this man is going to... Dr. Now is scary as hell to fat people, but he's such a nice guy. He just is no nonsense. Like, he, he just doesn't deal with, like, fat people lying to him. And to see what he has to tell me. You're overweight. That's what he's going to tell you. I just hope he gives me the help to lose what I need to get all this weight off of me and to never have to deal with living like this again. I'm tired of having to struggle to do everything and I'm ready to change that. So whatever Dr. Now tells me to do, to get his help and have surgery, I'm ready to do it. Yeah, you're gonna have to do all this stuff because he's not just gonna give you the pound pitchfork and it's just gonna, that's the tool we needed, the pound pitchfork nobody knows about. Stop giving my man bedroom eyes like that. He's mine, damn it. How you doing? All right. I'm Dr. Nazareth, and you are Crystal? Yes. And who is this young lady? Huh? My name's Ivoriana. Ivoriana. And this is what my daughter. is the relationship? My daughter. And that's your daughter. And this young man? I'm Josh Nelson. That's and my I'm brother. brother. Yeah, her daughter so does not want to be here right now. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. And that's your brother? Yeah. Okay. You got the whole family with the oxygen concentrator, huh? Yeah, because my tank's running low. All right, so where are you coming from? San Diego. California, huh? Yeah. Doing the trip like that is a lot of strain on your body because you're 611. Yes. 
actually, she kind of soldiered out the trip. It wasn't bad until she got to the hotel. Up until then, there wasn't really a whole lot of negative, and I didn't get to see her stop and get any fast food, so I guess she didn't eat any. Now, how did your body tolerate that? Not very well. My This leg over here was so sore. By the time we got here, I didn't think I was able to walk my foot. They were so swollen and sore because they were down for so long. And uh, you are four foot eleven, so that puts your BMI at 123. Holy hell. Okay, so she's got six pounds on where I started. And just to give you like a like a little bit of an example, I, my BMI was 73.8, but I'm 6'4". So I've got, what, a foot five inches on her? That's crazy she's that short, and her BMI's that damn high. She's playing with Jordan numbers plus 100. That's one of the highest BMIs I have ever seen. So that's very risky. You said, see, you got a lot of uh, medical condition, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, and being in oxygen, sleep apnea, asthma. So, right, and how mobile are you? I mean, I can get from point A to point B. I can't get very far walking-wise, but I can walk a little distance as long as somebody has a wheelchair behind me. Like, I could walk from maybe, like, here to the wall. Does that really count, though? As she, I mean, a couple steps, I guess. But at this point, she's let herself go to a point. She's got a lot of work to do, but the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. I'm so pulling for her, for the kids. So how long have you been at this weight? Uh... A few years I've been at least this big. So at what age you notice that you're overweight? I was overweight when I was about nine, ten years old. Okay. I've been overweight since I was a little kid. So what have you done to get your weight down? At one point I was trying a diet the hospital put me on, but it didn't stick very well. Yeah, because dieting sucks. It's not a lot of fun. You gotta want to stick to it. But she's overweight at nine. I'll give you a little example. When I was nine, I printed out the swimsuit, like the swimsuit, Sports Illustrated swimsuit models, and then I folded them up. I called them wallets, and I sold them to the other boys so I could have extra food at lunch. And then my mom got a phone call like, your son's selling half-naked women to the other boys, and she kind of laughed about it, but she was more mad that I wasted the ink, honestly. What do you mean? Why didn't you stick to it? I don't know. I just... I don't know if it was I wasn't focused on it or maybe I just didn't understand it all the way once I got home. But I just, I didn't stick to it. So if you want to change, what's different today after 39 years? I'm almost 40 and I need a change. I need to be there for my kids. My kids are getting ready to go into high school. I want to be able to watch my kids graduate. I want to eventually see them get married. I want to be there. Okay. That's the goal. I mean, father time's undefeated, and if you want to play around, he ain't bringing your ass a fun like a funnel cake or anything. He will uh, end you. So yes, you need to work on your weight like urgently. So you want to eat the same thing and me make you lose weight, right? No, I I understand that I'm gonna have to change. Okay. I I do understand that. So you understand that you're gonna have to change your eating habit to get there. Yes. Yeah. Man, I was so looking for the doctor that would let me just eat, and then he would cut out my stomach. We'd be good to go. I thought this way. That's what's so funny about it to me, is I thought, okay, I just get the surgery, I'm set. That's why I went up and down. I screwed up worse than, like, a lot of the people on the show, but it, mine's pretty funny. I completely understand that, and my daughter is even willing to do it with me. All right, that's good. So we need to do some testing and see what state of health you in because I'm concerned about how close your body may be to giving out. And so we need to make sure that you don't have any life-threatening issues that we need to address now. Before something happens, we can bring you back from, but also... She's got everything. Under, like, medical conditions, just put yes. Like, she's got it. But the only solution for you is to lose as much weight as you can, as fast as you can. Okay? Okay. So uh, from this point on, you're going to have to change your eating habit, and that's going to be um, up to you to understand what to do, what not to do, okay? Okay. We'll help you with that, but you have to learn what we tell you and make your choice to follow it, because if you don't, nothing will change. You understand? Could you imagine if Dr. Now put, like, a, one of those, what is like an ankle monitor on you? 
that could pick up on like your blood sugar could tell if you're eating a bunch of carbs or something that would be friggin' hilarious and uh yeah good so we're gonna give you some diet to follow mm -hmm. basically you're gonna eat it three times a day and around 400 calorie per meal okay so no more than 200 calories in one day and uh, make sure no snack in between meals mm -hmm. there'll be uh, no carb on your diet which means no bread no pasta my best friends away okay no pasta. okay it's either that or we take you away from your kids like yes carbs are good everybody knows carbs are really damn good but that's the problem they're too damn good that's Yes, no pasta, because the focus is going to be on protein, okay? Okay. And then, on top of that, I'm going to give you a copy of my book that has exercise. I want you to start doing those exercises one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. I need to get that book. Uh, like, you hear about it all the time. I call it the Fat Bible, but I've never actually seen it or read it. I, it pro I'll have to buy it. Okay. And if you do that, you should be able to lose 50 pounds in one month. But the goal I'm going to give you is to lose 60 pounds in two months. Okay. Okay? And it's going to be very important for you to do that. You think Dr. Now's taking it easier on her just because she's like, man, my best friend's carbs, like uh, Olive Garden for the obese. Like, you think that that's why he's taking it easier on her? Because you need to get as much strain off your body as possible. And losing weight is the only thing that's going to do that, okay? Okay. And if you get to that goal and get off the oxygen, I will approve you for weight loss surgery. But as long as you need oxygen like that, your body won't be able to handle anesthesia. That's tough, because she's got a secondary condition that has no finish line. So she's going to really have like a mental battle on her hands, and she's just going to have to look at the future she wants versus the food she wants right now. And she's gonna have to fight that battle mentally, but she could be strong. I mean, she's been through so much though. I feel like she definitely needs some therapy. So you need to get to where you're not dependent on that. So you're gonna be fit to go to anesthesia and surgery. And if you lose some weight, then maybe you can come off with this oxygen. That's, oh, that, is, that is a good, that would be a good thing. Okay. And so this is going to be a significant changes for you. And you're going to have to do everything you need to lose weight quickly and take better care of yourself. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I hope so, because you don't have a lot of time to waste. And you have... Yeah, TikTok. Uh, time's not your friend when you're this big. Like, you don't have time to goof off, which is so funny for me to say, because I definitely goofed off. But at some point, it's got to click. I'm hoping hers clicks right away, just because the kids, man. I keep saying that, but that's the reason I wanted to click. I've done that so far. Not only with you, Wade, but I can smell that your hygiene seems to be an issue, too. And at your weight, it's very easy to get infections. It can become life-threatening if you don't try to bathe consistently. So what... Oh, my God. It The most mortifying thing ever when you're this big is, like, somebody smelling you. Like, ah. Oh. The fact that he just said, hey, lady, you're super morbidly obese and you stink to high hell, like, that's terrible. What are you doing with your personal hygiene? Um, well, I normally take a shower. I have a, I have a shower at my older place in San Diego. That's true, though. She's been on the road, so she's been uh, baby wiping her bussy this whole time. So, yeah, that makes sense. She would stink a little bit. And my okay. daughter helps me. Okay. Any trauma in childhood that drove you to overeat? Sorry, Josh, you don't know about this, but yes, I did. I was when I was younger. So that was the most traumatic thing that I've ever had. How old are you? Uh, I started when I was about eight. Eight, and then after that, you start going to food to comfort. I believe so. I believe. Would you be scared to let your brother know something like that? Or would you want to share something like that just so he would understand you a little more? Like where you're coming from, you know what I mean? Because he probably just sees this whole time, thinks you're just lazy, you just like to eat a whole lot of food, and he doesn't know that there's underlying stuff there from the time way back when you were kids. That's exactly what happened. Okay. 
So um, um, we will set you up to see a therapist because it's going to be important. You get some help to talk about that trauma and see if they can help you with the emotional thing that drive you to eat. But that is something you can't ignore, okay? Okay. So welcome. You, your sister says fantastic things about you. It sounds yeah. like you're a great brother and you guys are super close. Mm. And one of the things I'm working on um, with Crystal is her being um, honest about things that have happened to her. So she's protecting you from some news. So He does seem like a pretty good brother. Like he's there for her. He moved across the country for her. He's trying his best. Now she just needs a try, but maybe this will be like something they open up to each other, they share, and they bond a little more. So she doesn't feel like she's ready, but I think you guys are ready. So, Crystal, what are we, what are we trying to tell your brother? So you remember when we lived in Valla Vista? Yeah. And then I moved in with Grandma? Yeah. And nobody knew why? Mm-hmm. God, uh, if this is this going where I think this is going, your dad me <sighs> for a very shit. long time. I That's, didn't know about that. I know you didn't know about any of that. Nobody knew about it except for mom. Oh man, he just—you're gonna have to disown your father at this point. That's disgusting. But I don't know why that all these stories. There's always like some creepy guy involved or something. Like, these Minecraft YouTubers are out here running wild in the streets or something. Mom knew all about it and still stayed. And yeah, she stayed with I him. I feel like she did not do her job then. Yeah, my Damn guess, right. Josh, is this is going to answer some questions for you. Yeah, it answers a lot of questions. It answers, like, for me, it answers the questions of her and, her and Mom's relationship. I think if I'm him, I'm probably mad at Mom, too. Like, even though it's your father, he did something like that? Report him, get rid of him? I don't know. I probably would end up in jail if that... Because, I don't know, man. I can't say it. I knew there were things going on, but I didn't exactly know all the time what. And yeah, it helps you make sense of it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think you, you understand her better now, don't you? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of weight to carry those kind of secrets. I understand her, but I understood her from the start. I've been where she's at. It's just the thought of, like, changing so much, you can't do. And then she's got stuff on her, like, mind that's just messing with her 24-7. People that let her down, family that didn't do what they should have done for her. So it's like everyone in her whole entire life has let her down. Why wouldn't she just let herself down? But she's going to have to learn how to, how to, like, claw back, fight. Just be the person you want to be. Look to the future. You know, there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders. Pressure bursts pipes. Pressure makes diamonds. So she's just a diamond in the rough right now. She could totally turn this around. For the past month, I've been working to follow Dr. Now's diet, and I think I've been doing well with it. Got some chicken up there, so we can, like, grill a piece of chicken, okay? It's been a lot to learn, though. And it's also been a process. Trying to figure out what meals we all it's crazy that she's been following this for the past month and they're still in a hotel with these poor kids. Like best. We don't want a whole lot of salt on it. We want some we need some pepper though. Because my family is doing this with me to help support me. So I want to find things that work for all. Are we making waffle chicken? You can do that? What the hell? This thing they're going to get what salmonella or something? That's crazy. All of us. So I feel really good about how we're doing. And I feel like I'm losing weight. But I know the question is, is it enough for me to get to my goal? All right, I'm done. I don't think I would go back for seconds on the waffle chicken either. That looked disgusting. I want that answer to be yes. So I'm working really hard at my exercises. But those have been harder. Mostly because of my oxygen tank and how it gets in the way. Eight, nine. She's exercising. I almost, like, they try, but she seems like she's eating all right. And I really hope this lady's not honey dicking me like some of the other ones. But at this point, I think she might just be doing pretty damn good. Oh, no. 
You can do it. Put your back into it. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's all the walking that's hard because of my oxygen. And because there's not really any room for me to do it here. Okay. It's just not a lot of space for all of us being in here. And that is why Fat Acceptance wants wider hallways for more physical act physical activity, guys. You guys thought it was because they wanted to be lazy and they wanted bigger shit. No, it's for physical activity. There's so much room for activities. And it's hard to do what I need. But I'm still doing it and trying to work my hardest. I'm trying to lose weight and get to Dr. Now's goal before my appointment next month so that when I go back, I can get approved for my weight loss surgery. And all this would be for nothing if I don't. So if somebody was walking behind her and they accidentally stepped on the oxygen tube, would she still be all right? Or if that air gets like kinked and somehow cut off, or is she in, is she in bad shape? Walking, and, and we're walking, and, and we're talking. Walking. But that's only gonna happen if I show Dr. Now I can do exactly what he says. So I'm working as best as I can to make sure I do that. I wish we could have done that outside, but we did it. High five. <sighs> you better listen to the fat god. Doctor now knows what the hell he's talking about at this point. What is it, 5.4 million pounds he's made people lose? Yeah, I think it's something around that mark uh, dealing. Yeah, because they said how many patients. It's 5.4 million. And I can feel that I've had some results because I do feel better and stronger. And like, I can move around easier. So that's made me feel good. And made me hopeful that I'm doing Look at this. Okay, hear me out. I think she has lost weight. Because she's not as flying V anymore, and now she's more of an M. Okay? Keeping things right. And how I need to make it to my goal today. So I can get approved for weight loss surgery. And Dr. Now gave me the goal to lose 60 pounds in over two months. No, guys, do we think she's lost 60? Is she just so short we can't see the distribution of fat? Oh, what is going on? I'm so curious now. If I succeeded, then that means I'm going to be at least down to 551. So I'm hoping I'm as low as that. I got honey dicked again. 602. Oh, well, you know what? She's pretty close to 60 with that one. She missed it by a bee's dick, man. She's like right there. 602. Wow. It's nine pounds. It's not what we wanted. Got a lot more to go. I'm disappointed about that amount and that I didn't have bigger progress. But I guess I didn't. See? I didn't realize that she was going to fly V out of there. She tricked me. She did the M on the way in. Didn't do enough like I thought. I felt like I was working really, really hard. But if I was, I know I would have had more of a result, like Dr. Now said I would. And I don't, so I have to do better. But hopefully, Dr. Now doesn't think I'm not committed to this. I think this is the cleanest I've ever seen her, though. Based on the clothes she was wearing last time versus now, when he said you stink, it struck a chord. Because I am completely dedicated to doing everything I need to get healthy. And I know I can do better. And I will. I just didn't make it far enough this time. Hello, how y'all doing? Hi, how you doing? All right. Okay. Good to see you again. It's nice to see you too. All right, Crystal. It looked like you lost some weight, but that much. So why is that? I'm not sure. Nine pounds, doctor. Now, we can write home about that one. That's a lot of damn weight. You just need to approve me right now. I did your liquid diet, and I learned your other diet. And we've all been trying to do it. And I've also been doing the exercises, so... So, at your weight, losing only 45 pounds a month, 
means that you're still eating goes to five times what you should be eating. That's a lot. No kidding, lady. And just because he says liquid diet doesn't mean you can drink the whipped cream out of the can. I don't think she realized that. Because part of her, I, I guarantee she thinks she's doing good. Yes, it is a lot. So how is that happening? Are you eating high-calorie food or a lot of food or both? What is it? I'm not sure, but I try it every day to only eat healthy, so I don't know. No matter what you think, you're still not eating healthy. You know what? We're just going to blame it on the ravioli roaches that carried all the damn food straight to my mouth because we need somebody to blame in this case. So you still need to cut back drastically on what you're eating because your BMI is still dangerously high. So you still need to get your weight down immediately. Okay? Okay. How is your stamina? Do you feel like that's getting better with exercises? Yes. I can walk more now, so that feels good. I think she could probably walk about what she always could. She's just pushing herself more now versus she didn't want to push herself at all before. So I think I'm doing okay with that. All right, that's good. So keep doing that. How was the therapy you went to? It was hard, but I do think it helped me in a lot of ways. So I think it was good. Okay, because that's going to be important for your emotional well-being and to help you in the long run, okay? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this lady's just got hurdle after hurdle after hurdle of things she needs to overcome, and it's not going to be easy at all. But her thinking she could just cut back a little, and she'd be all right. She could just stroll in there because she took five extra steps this way or that way. You're not outworking your bad diet at that point. She lost something, but I don't think by any means she followed his diet 100% with the chicken waffles every single time. Right now, we're headed to our new apartment to move in. And we're all excited about it because we've been in a hotel together for way too long. Fuck me sideways. She's with Ronald McDonald. You're, oh my, you just left Dr. Now's office. You're at Evan McDonald's. Come on, woman. What are you doing? Okay, let me get two uh, sausage burritos, bacon, two hash browns, a sausage biscuit. Uh, let me get a fruit and maple oatmeal, please. And a blueberry muffin. Okay, and let me get a number one. I'd like an order of your uh, cinnamon rolls and two extra hash browns. Holy shit, we blew the budget. Kids, sorry, we can't move in anymore. We just bought $100 worth of effing McDonald's. But we figured it out, and I'm excited. And I know the girls are too. Because we won't have to be all cramped in the same area anymore, like the hotel. and I'll have more room to walk and do my exercises. So I know this is just a huge relief for all of us. Okay, we got more room to exercise, but we're ordering McDonald's on the way to the exercise. That's a long drop. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not funny. I can't Better drop it like it's hot, hash brown heiress here. Get up in this wheelchair. Let's get in the damn house, eat your McDonald's, and then you better start the damn diet. Reach the ground. Your legs are so short. I know, that's why I need a curb. Are you going to walk? I got you. This is bigger than I thought it would be. She's trucking to get in there and eat them damn hash browns. She got to move on for them things. I know it's not a mansion, but at least there's more room for all of us. Isn't that the exact same hotel we keep seeing? Like, I swear, what's her name in Lee? went to this same place and were sitting outside because they couldn't get their like papers approved. Now we got a Mick Mansion here with this lady too. My bed just goes in the living area, but my girls get a room and Josh will eventually get a place to share with his uncle who's going to be here with us off and on. He decided to stay. What a supportive family. They're all bending. They're all doing everything they can for you. 
the least you can do is diet. Like, help them out. Do what you're supposed to do. So they don't have to stay there forever and babysit you all the time. Like, you've got your own kids, but you're the one that's acting like more of a kid, just not sticking to the diet. Help us longer. He's already been down here with us a lot longer than he thought. So I know this has been hard on everyone. And I know it's all for me. So I'm not going to let my family down. That's what I wanted to hear from her. That she was actually going to take this serious for a change. Because so far, she really hasn't. And I know I got to do better this time with Dr. Now. So I'm going to work even harder over the next two months. So I can get to the goal I need by the next appointment. It's been a little crazy lately, as school picks up for the girls and Josh is trying to work. So I asked Dr. Now for a little more time, and he gave me an extra month. But he also made my weight loss goal 90 pounds instead of 60 this time. Oh no, you tried to hustle an extra month out of him. Okay, she better have lost a good bit, because last time, what was it, 9 pounds in friggin' 2 months? So I'm really nervous about that. Even more nervous than last time, because on top of the higher goal, I just don't know what to expect to see from the scale. Ms. Wallens? Because of how off I was last time, and how I thought I was closer. Not knowing if it's enough makes it scary. But I know I did more this time to make progress. Man, I walked in there one time thinking I had absolutely killed it. My ass hadn't lost next to nothing. So, I mean, I understand how it happens. It's just, you gotta figure it out at some point. But I, my legs were swollen, damn it. it. Water weight, it was water weight. And I even did more of the therapy with Dr. Paradise. He focused on me taking more accountability and responsibility for myself. I was at 602 at my last weight check. And to meet my goal, I'd have to have lost 90 pounds to get down to 511, which is a lot. But I'm really hoping I did it. Your weight is 560. She lost more than I thought. 564. I didn't think she had lost that much, but okay, she's doing something at this point. 564. You've oh, lost 38 pounds. Wow, that's a good job. I'm not sure what to think. I'm disappointed. I don't have more progress. But I lost more. I only lost nine pounds the first time. So this is like four times that. So I did better, but it's still not enough. Oh man, you know morbid people's favorite thing to do is multiply. That's four times, baby. We uh, quadrupled up here. Now we just need to get approved for the damn surgery. And I think that's all that's going to matter to Dr. Now. All right, Crystal, you lost 38 pounds over the last three months, huh? Yes, sir, I sure did. Which is improvement with barely one third of what you shall lost. I knew Dr. Now was not going to applaud you for 13 pounds a month. This guy wants you to drop that every week. Easy. So what did you change from last time? I had a lot of bad things from my eating. And having our own apartment now has helped us with meal planning. And then I just try to do better with your diet and eat less, like you said. All right. Meal planning in a hotel going to be a little bit tougher, right? She was making chicken in a waffle maker. So she's definitely had a bit of a struggle there. But there are certain things that could be done. But yeah, she lost some weight, so I'm happy for her. That's good. When you're still losing only 12 to 13 pounds a month, when you should be losing at least 30. I know. So if you did the diet, you would have easily lost 50 pounds a month. So your goal shouldn't be that hard to do if you're really following the diet I gave you. So if you don't get to your goal and start losing 30 pounds a month by the next visit, we may need to admit you to the hospital and put you on a controlled diet to do that for you. They're going to send her to the chubby cell block for the controlled diet? No way, man. That's crazy. I didn't think they could do that. You could be super morbidly obese into a straitjacket if Dr. Nell gets a hold of your ass. More people are going to be scared to go to his program. They found out he's just locking people up in a friggin' hospital because they're eating too much Hershey's. You understand that? Seriously? That is how serious it is for you to lose weight. I didn't realize that was part of the plan. It shouldn't be because it's not ideal. The more we have to intervene, the less likely you will succeed in the long run. So Thank God my surgeon couldn't do that to me because if he would have locked my ass up, I oh mean, I probably would have lost it.
I stormed out of there a couple times. I definitely was a bad patient. What needs to happen is that you take responsibility to do this on your own. But at your BMI, is going to get too risky to keep letting you continue like this. So if you want to keep moving ahead and get weight loss surgery, lose 60 pounds over the next two months. And get to where you're not dependent on oxygen, and we can do that. So what happened next is all up to you. You got that? Yes, I do, Dr. Now. Everything was in her power kind of this whole time. But, I don't know, her self-belief, everything, her whole life has just been people like crapping on her and her not being able to figure out her own stuff. And I mean, I don't know, man. I understand why she struggles with the stuff she struggles with. It's just, man, just seeing the kids, the kids, man. She's got so much to live for, so much to see in the future. Hopefully she can just get it together, like all the way together. At least she lost something though. Because it's honestly hard to replace that feeling that food got me. But changing that is something I'm committed to do. So overall, I feel good about how I'm doing. I know I feel good the last two times, but I'm doing more this time. So I'm hoping it's enough to get me even better results this time. So I'm Nobody ever made me do like the chubby arts and crafts thing, but for some people, I guess that works. It'll help her out in the long run. Not messing around. My focus is 100% on changing my life for the better and doing all I need to make that a reality. And I'm seeing the progress that I'm making. I think that'll be good for tonight. Girls. Yeah. Oh my God. She brought her little like thing. With, what's that thing called? Did she steal it from the hotel? No, I saw it early on. She had to jack that from a Home Depot or something. Can you come here for a minute? This past month, it's the first time my daughters are starting to see how committed I am with all I'm doing to be a better mom to them. And I made some charts out. Do you think maybe you could help me and hang them up a little bit for me? I'm finally going to become the mom. I told them I wanted to be so they can be kids and they don't have to worry about me and take care of me. That's everything I've been begging for this entire episode. For you to stop acting like you're just a morbid mama who just needs meal time with them and actually become a parent, take care of them, look out for their needs before your own, like every other mother on earth probably does. I have one more month before I go back to Dr. Now again. And if I don't hit my goal this next time, it's not going to be for lack of trying. Because I'm giving this all I got so that when I go back, whatever progress is possible for me to make, I'll have made it. I mean, I really hope so, but part of me kind of doesn't. Just because I want to see her try to escape on that wheelchair with Doctor now chasing her. Like, you're going to the hospital till you lose 30 pounds. Like, right now. I just want to see him chase her out of the office. I'm at Doctor Now's again to find out if the progress I made this time is enough. At my last appointment, two months ago, I was 564. And Doctor Now says I need to lose at least 30 pounds a month to show him I can do this. So that means I need to have lost at least 60 pounds from the last time. To okay, 504 is what we're shooting for here. What's the over-under on this? Because, man, I, I don't know. I think she's going to be close, but a little short. That's my guess. Get down to 504. Your weight is 498, lost 66 pounds. Well, damn, color me shocked. This lady actually did it. Wow, that's awesome. I never thought there'd be a point in my life where I was happy to see a number on a scale. But that one just made me really happy. Me either. I feel really good and I'm excited to find out what Dr. Now thinks and what he's going to say because I told him I was committed and I told him I was going to do this. And I've been... Yes, but he also said, like, she has to get off the oxygen. So I feel like that's what's going to be holding her back and that's going to be the tougher mental battle because... It's not something she feels like she could do without, and it's not something that she can see the finish line for. I'm wanting to prove that to him since my first appointment with him. So it feels really good to get to his goal and to show him and my family that I could do this. And no matter what, I'm going to keep doing this until I make it. And I'm really hoping that what Dr. Now is about to tell me gets me a big step closer to doing that. Hello, how y'all doing? 
All right, how are you doing? Good. All right. So, Crystal, you started making the progress you need. Yes, sir. Man, I, just the oxygen, man. The oxygen. It's going to be an issue. I really want him to approve her. I really do. Great. So how do you feel? I can definitely feel a difference in my energy level and what I can do, so I feel good. All right. Well, I am proud of you for figuring out what you need to do and working hard. Thank you. So what made the big difference for you? Red Bull without the Reese Cups, baby. I'm just a ball of energy. We're drinking sugar-free around here. I don't know. I tried to wait to eat if I was upset or mad or anything like that. And I'm working with Dr. Paradise, like you said, too. And I made a chart to hold me accountable to make my diet better. Yeah, I could have told you that that don't work. Twinkies do not, like, get rid of the tears. So if you sit there and just eat more and more, so many people eat their feelings. It's never going to do you any good at all. I don't have feelings. I, I just don't eat. That's why. No, I'm just kidding. Of course I have feelings. But I, whenever I'm like, upset or something... I just don't eat. So I guess all that's helping. Great. So do you feel like you're starting to be able to control your eating habit better instead of using it to cope? I do feel like that, and I feel like it's getting more in control. Great. So, Crystal, thankfully, we don't have to take any drastic measures with you at this point. And with your recent progress, I'm going to approve you for weight loss surgery. I would have liked to see you guys try to drag her ass to the hospital anyway, because you've seen what she does with elevators. I would love to see some of you guys try to get her up a couple flights of stairs, because she's lost weight. But that's still a fair bit to get up them steps. But she's approved. That's awesome. Wait, are you serious? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But the only thing you need to do is get off of oxygen dependence before we can move ahead. So if you... I knew it, man. That sucks. Because she's working hard at this point, And now, like, it's a big what if to her. We can do that. We can schedule you surgery. Okay? Okay. So what you need to do, keep losing until you feel you don't need it anymore. And we got to do some tests on you today. And do an EKG and chest x-ray to see how your lungs are doing. And as soon as they're strong enough, we can do your weight loss surgery. I think I probably would just hide the tank and I would start carrying a balloon around in between my tatas and I would just lean down and suck on the balloon real quick every time I needed some air. Then I would just get approved. Lie to the doctor. That's the best course always, right? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Don't lie to your doctors. Please don't listen to me at all. You think you can do that? How much weight do I have to lose for my lungs to get healthy enough? Unfortunately, there is no way to determine a specific amount. Today we can see if you're caused or not, but there is no exact way that determines when your lungs are going to be healthy and strong enough. Just Isn't there like that little uh, tube thing you breathe in to like strengthen your lungs? I don't know. There's some kind of tool to strengthen it, I think. You have to keep losing to reduce the strain on them. And when you feel you can breathe without oxygen, we can check your lung again and see if you're ready. Okay? Okay. All right. I'm proud of you. Keep up the good work. And we'll get some tests right on you before you go and see where things are with you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Now. All right, well, it's nice to at least hear him say he's proud of her because she's working hard, finally. And I doubt she's probably heard that very much in her life, just seeing how her mother was, just shipping her off like that. So, I mean, little things like that probably make a world of difference to her, honestly. I told my girls that I wanted to get out and do something with them today. And they got really excited. It's been a really long time since I've tried to do anything like this with them. That's kind of sweet, because they're not used to you wanting to go do stuff with them. But now that you've lost some weight, you feel better about yourself, you, your health is on the, like, it, it's on, it's getting better. But, yes, of course they want to go outside with you. So I asked them what they wanted to do. They came up with going to the park to do some frisbee and chalk. So that's what we're doing. I've got more energy and stamina for my exercising, but I'm still not going to be running any marathons anytime soon. Oh. I think she's ready for the Boston Marathon at this point, and not the Boston Cream Marathon either. But I don't know if we're ultimate frisbee ready here yet. 
so I still have to take it easy and not push myself too hard. Hi, Brianna, come play with me. Because Dr. Now said the test and x-rays did show that my lungs still need to get stronger. So I'm working on that. Oh, there you go. Go, Mom! Just to hear, like, your lungs need to be stronger, that would discourage me so much. I'm really, like, shocked and surprised to see her pushing forward. Look you can that. do it! Beautiful. Now we're going to go to this crack and then turn. Okay. That's what she said. And we're turning. But I'm being careful not to push myself too hard and try to give up the oxygen soon. Yay, Mom! You did it! But he said the best way that I could get off of it was to lose more weight. So that's... Yeah, but he also said this might be psychosomatic with you, so you might just think you need it more than you actually do. So hopefully that's not the case. My focus, but I'm also exercising every day. Every chance I get to build up my energy and stamina so I can keep getting stronger. Oh, you're getting chalk all over your hands, all over your pants. Oh, oh no. Fudge. Oh, well. Did you have a good walk? Yes. That's good. At least they're good kids and they don't cuss because I've heard fudge and gosh darn it and stuff like that. I was cussing up a storm by the time I was that girl's age. Good. Doctor now thinks it'll take me four to five months with how I am losing weight to get to where my lungs are strong enough for surgery. But my goal is to get to where I don't need this oxygen anymore in three months because that's the limit I want to wait to get my surgery. The sooner I get weight loss surgery, the better. Because the sooner I get it, the sooner I can start living the way I want. But... I mean, sitting here watching her exercise, like flap her wings, do all that while her daughters are playing and looking the happiest I've seen them this entire ex episode is pretty heartwarming. This is kind of how you want them all to end and it doesn't always go like this. At least I'm able to get out and be with my kids like this now. And that's something that's incredible for me and it makes me happy. Okay, Nunu, no, Nunu, no, no, turn sideways towards me. Just like you've been drawing, okay? So I'm not letting anything get in my way to stop me or even slow me down because I am intent as can be to do this. Gotta get those Facebook photos to post, but uh, yeah, she seems like she's got a full head of steam at this point, so not nothing can stop her, hopefully. Man, I'm really gonna have to look for an update on her. And to get to my goal. So much has been sacrificed by my family and me to do this. And I'm not going to let that go to waste at all by messing this up. All right. So, I don't know. Maybe there's a follow-up or a where are they now on her. Her story was kind of one of the most sad to start, honestly. Like, it was heartbreaking to hear all the things that this poor woman had to go through. And then all the partners she had who were just terrible, terrible people. And then to see that she had two daughters that were very supportive they seem like very kind children and then they got uprooted and they came with you so i mean i really hope she was a success story but like i said i'll check i'll see if there's an update on her i can add in right here and uh yeah just leave a like leave a comment let me know what you guys think and uh i'll see y'all later bye